close your eyes and picture a car. It's a car you just bought off a guy on Craigslist. You go to pick it up and inside there are slips of paper with addresses and phone numbers of complete strangers. A high mark health insurance card from someone who wasn't even the car's previous owner. A Turkey Hill card. A $200 ticket from the Reading Parking Authority. And a cap from a malt soft drink made in Puerto Rico. Now open your eyes. 1996 Honda Accord. Because your weed dealer needs to get around too. Gas, cash, grass, nobody rides for free. In terms of design, the 1996 Honda Accord was one of the most painfully generic cars ever made. But you don't really get a Honda Accord because you care about appearances. You want a budget-friendly little shitbox that won't break down in the middle of your burn cruise. Gas, cash, or grass, no one rides for free. Because there are a few things on this earth more annoying than friends who don't pay their way. Mike only had this accord for a month before we filmed it. He had set up a deal to purchase it off of a guy who was living with his dad, probably. Everything was set up and ready to go, but before the deal could go through, the owner's house caught fire. And as with plenty other guys before and since, the owner made a beeline right for the garage to get the car out of there, but by the time he got there, the whole one side was scorched and melted. Not too bad, but man, it messed up the paint and... Uh. Mike still wanted the Accord. He'd made the deal, and damn it, he was sticking to it. And believe it or not, he has no plans now to flip this car. He's keeping her, and he isn't changing a thing. There is an aftermarket head unit and also a remote start button on the key fob, but other than that... Nothing. She's pretty much stock as she is. With a 2.2 liter, 16 valve, non VTEC engine. These are the ones with still have the distributor on them. And it oh, has manual transmission, we'll get to that. And 224,000 miles on her. Releasing in 1976, the Honda Accord was a big hit at the time when the demand was high for smaller, more fuel efficient cars. We're talking about the Arab oil embargo a lot because it really did shape the modern auto industry. With the first oil crisis getting the ball rolling in 19. 1973, and the second pretty much completing the ritual killing stroke in 1979. So you can't really contextualize why the Accord was successful without getting into this stuff, so forgive the brief magic school bus detour. In 1972, imports only made up 13% of the market share in the American automotive market, but by 1975, it was 15.8% and would continue to grow throughout the decade as consumers had to look to Japanese and German cars to find something economical that didn't compromise on performance and reliability. American automakers tried to compete but struggled after the creation of CAFE standards. The, the result was a bunch of poorly planned flops like the Cadillac Cimarron and the Ford Pinto and the Chevy Vega. America had been the beacon of excess for so long that we didn't know how to downsize. We only knew bigger. We only knew more. For every make and model that weathered the storm, like the Ford Thunderbird, the Lincoln Continental, or the Oldsmobile Cutlass, there were makes and models that slowly died off like dinosaurs, like the Ford Galaxy 500. And there might actually be more physical evidence that dinosaurs existed than there is to prove the Ford Galaxy was ever a thing. Of course, necessity is the mother of invention, so we got innovations like turbocharging, front-wheel drive, direct fuel injection. And the embargo also led to the rise of the S SUV, which came out as a direct result of cafe litigation, because SUVs were never considered passenger vehicles. On paper, those things were trucks, and trucks didn't have to conform to cafe standards because, oh, these are just infrastructure vehicles. Meanwhile, Ford Explorer, Ford Explorer, Ford Explorer, Ford Explorer. Right. They were just cheating a loophole. America still had a hard time keeping up with the import market, and it was because of manufacturers like Honda who developed a reputation as a manufacturer of fun, reliable fuel sippers. I mean, the Honda Civic was popular in the early 70s, laying the foundation for the car that would go on to become one of the most successful nameplates among millennial shoppers, but the Accord was arguably Honda's crown jewel since it took those same concepts that made the Civic a popular choice and offered more power and more room. By 1982, the Accord became the first Japanese car to be produced in America, where it remained the top-selling Japanese import from 1982 until 1997. We're looking at the fifth generation Accord, which comes at the tail end of its glory period. This was at the point where the Accord was slowly becoming a Swiss army car with interchangeable bodies and dimensions on a single basic platform. 
For its time, the fifth generation Accord was a car that narrowly avoided looking like an anachronism from the 1980s. But again, were you really trying to impress anybody with a car like this? If you ended up getting the old Burnville bobblehead in this car, odds are your success had nothing to do with this car, just as surely as there is someone in the world eating pussy right now. But just like that... Oh man, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Look, all right, yeah. If the EH2 is the tomboyish girl who gives big hugs in eighth grade, the Accord Wagon is that same girl in 12th grade after she fills out and still gives big hugs. This is a fun car. This big old wagon is a blast. I mean, it's, a lot of it's down to that manual transmission, but the engine gets credit too. Okay, this 2.2 liter isn't a VTEC, so relax. Okay, there's no coil packs either. No variable valve timing at all. And after this many miles, I'm guessing it's making... Uh... Look, if you put this on a dyno, I'll be surprised if 100 horsepower is getting to the wheels. And this Accord wagon is heavier than the sedan. This non-VTEC motor is carrying a heavy load all the time, even when this vehicle is unladen. But the personality of this moderately sized Honda 4 is what makes this a stealth enthusiast car. Yep, this family wagon, available with a 5-speed manual, is an enthusiast car. Look, I got an email uh, from a kid the other day saying, I really want a, oh gosh, what did he want? He wanted a Honda Civic. He wanted something fun and fast, something that I reviewed. Oh, he really wanted an EH2. That's right. After I, after uh, that, that review did really well. And a lot of people said, oh, I want EH2s now. Great. But this one kid, sorry to call you kid, but you know, I'm 35. You're a kid to me. His parents got him the, a safe, car you're 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 18 years old we'll get you a car but it's going to be safe because we're parents and we want to keep you alive so they got him a ford taurus yeah fine but a ford taurus well that's not a fun zippy around car that's just a family sedan that's something that doesn't really give you any feedback it's made to just get people around in some comfort and be safe but that's what a parent is thinking a parent wants to buy you a car that's going to keep you safe. They don't care if you're having fun or not. Our jobs, as the people who created you, our job is to keep you alive. I don't care if you're having fun behind the wheel or, um, or not. Especially, you know, w w what is an adolescent but a small adult with no civil rights? Suck it up. Here's your, here's your Ford Accord. Or here's your, here's your Ford Taurus. <laughs> but this, this station wagon is a safe car. This is a car that your parents would be totally fine with you having. You say, oh, you know, so-and-so's selling their Honda Accord station wagon. And they think, parents still think, oh, station wagon, that's a nice benign car that's not gonna go fast. And then you so, and then you get to the car and say, oh, it's a stick shift, can you drive stick shift? Well, maybe you can teach me. Great, father-son bonding moment. They don't really equate that this motor, this transmission, and this car, they don't really go together, even though this is a package deal. But the end result of this combination is something that's fun. Look at that! <laughs> oh, this is fun. It's a big car, but it's fun. Well, big-ish. It's a great size. It's a good size. Good size. Yeah. Correct size. Yeah. You, I don't care that it's not a VTEC motor. You can wet. This is a car that you drive 10 tenths all the time. You can wow right up to the top. And the thing of the beauty of, I know I'm a little bit Honda fanboy here, but the beauty of these motors or engines, depending on what you want, they want to go. They want to go fast. Even though that this is not the performance engine, it will enthusiastically just whoa right up to the red line all the time. And and it's quiet when you're just driving around. But when you when you nail it, this little thing growls. All right, so 2.2 liter four single jingle with a distributor. That sounds nice. It wants to go. It's not like that stupid Vulcan V6 that you ask for performance and it goes, <laughs> this is on the top 10 of the mo top 10 of the most fun cars ever driven. And it's a Honda Accord station wagon. And it has all, and it's, and it's really, really well made in the, it doesn't feel old in here. And, and, a, and inside the trunk too, or the trunk. Yeah. The cargo area, the, the area above the, where the uh, space saver donut is, is instead of like on, even on my Honda fit, the base of the cargo floor is just a piece of cardboard. 
with with carpet on top of it. This is a well-designed piece of reinforced plastic, like a thick, heavy plastic thing that's not going to bend and break. And look, it has little kubi holes on either side for more stuff. This thing's amazing. So put the Honda Accord station wagon with a five-speed on your list. These are nice and they deserve to stay out there. I mean, wh why get a car whose best days are behind her? Why save an old dog from a shelter or, or adopt a sick child? Because damaged things still have value. Instead of being grossed out by cosmic imperfections, we ought to be wondering what sort of story is here. Because every story is a window to understanding. Don't you really hate friends who don't pay the way? Oh, it just ain't right. Saying, dude, I promise that I'll pay you soon. Just give me a ride Don't you really hate friends who don't pay their way? Oh, it just ain't right Saying, dude, promise that I'll pay you soon 